I am at Salt Bay. This is one of the lowest tides in August. Not the lowest tide. They happen after dark, so does this one actually. Low tide is predicted for nine o'clock and it gets dark at about 10 past eight. But I want to try and get out to the Mulberry Harbour, which is wreck of a ship way out there, about a mile offshore. So I think I'm going to be doing a bit of wading because there's still another two hours before low tide. I'm doing this on a whim. Uh, one thing I'm noticing here, which I didn't notice last time when I came, which was last Easter maybe, I don't remember seeing the millions and millions of cockles that I'm seeing on the surface last time I was here. But now there's, there's tons of only tiny little cockles, but it just shows you that they're here in abundance. Yeah, look, there's tons of them. I don't know, what's that one of last year's? I don't know. There's bigger ones. Like that. Actually, that one's dead. Is it? No, that's alive, actually. There's millions of them. So this is a... a future cockling video in the making, I reckon. Evidence of razor clams, that's dead, but um, well, it shows you that they're here. Got tiny little fish darting around at my feet. They are common gobies and they are ubiquitous. They are everywhere, in shallow water, in rock pools. I think the British record for a common goby is actually in the Chelmer and Blackwater Canal, believe it or not. Swimming amongst the pike and the perch and the roach and the bream. As you would expect, Shore crabs abound. That over there towards the sun, that's South End. That's Thorpe Bay in front of us. And that's looking towards Shoebury Ness and in the distance, the North Sea. One of the things I remember about the last time I came was the amount of uh, sea potatoes that I was finding. There's a jellyfish there, is it? No, it's a lump of plastic. Look, that fooled me. No wonder sea turtles die. No, that is a, that is a jellyfish. <laughs> As I was saying, last time I was here, I remember that there was loads of sea potatoes, dead ones on the surface, and um, the telltale signs that they were below the surface as well. I see them in more abundance here than I've ever seen them before. Like, I'll show you this, this clip. I've never shown this video. That is, that is a live sea potato. Well, I've actually gone and dug up with my hands a sea potato, a live one. It wasn't very hard actually. You've just got to be careful not to squash it when you dig your fingers in. But I'm going to put it back now. I caught a sand eel in my hand. There are other people in the distance I can notice making their way to this wreck out here. I'm not the only madman out here. A lot of the kite surfers in the distance and these people here I've got company. All the bivalves, all the little squirts coming out. Look, that's all cockles and whatever else. <laughs> I don't know if you're picking that up. 
there's about 50 minutes before the sun goes down and I'm that far off the coast really what I've got to do here I've got to do it quick I mean you get another I don't know what 20 minutes half an hour after the sun goes down where you can see what you're doing of so I've probably got about an hour and 20 minutes of reliable light I've got the I've got the light on my phone to lead the way if I get stuck out here in the dark there are other maniacs out here so I'm not on my own this channel's quite a bit deeper actually never mind I hope it don't get any deeper than this because I've got my phone and my car keys in my pocket I'll have to hold on to them if I go any deeper than this you can see a big container ship heading on its way out of the Thames estuary towards the North Sea and the hills in the background there they are that is North Kent that is the Isle of Sheppey I'm gonna walk around this on the way back too much trepidation because the, the water's coloured I can't see where I'm putting my feet I don't want to end up in a hole with my phone in my pocket oyster catchers and there's the Mulberry Harbour and there's already people there here I am a mile or so offshore about 40 minutes before darkness and all these people have made it to the Mulberry Harbour it's amazing really and if I do this tomorrow low tide will be later and I'd have to do this in complete darkness so that's why I'm doing it today <laughs> look at this oh look it's a live sea potato oh no it's dead but it's not long dead there's oysters and mussels all over that structure. This is quite deep, this water here. This is one of the Mulberry Harbours that was part of the, the D-Day landings and I think it was being towed to Normandy when it come adrift and it landed on this sandbank and split in two. I'm not sure whether it was on its way to the D-Day landings or on its way back from the D-Day landings but I'll, uh, I'll have a little look around it all these people are taking photos before the sun goes down <laughs> It's nice to know really that just before darkness I'm not the only lunatic out here so if I got in trouble there are other people out here now that over there that is the North Kent coast that's the Isle of Grain with the cranes over there to the right and straight in front there that's Sheerness and to the left that's the rest of the Isle of Sheppey On another day, I would get on that and climb all over it, but not today because I'm wearing normal clothes <laughs> apart from what's on my feet. I've seen enough and I'm heading back because I fancy a pint. I'm taking a different path back, but just to see if there's anything different as I'm walking back. There's some intrepid souls on their way out there. <laughs> I mean, it ain't like they can't get back. It's just going to be dark by the time they get back. Kite surfers are still out there.
these little streams emptying. What a beautiful place to be. a lot of people out there asking me where I've been over the last few months. Well, um, I'm going to explain now and I'm going to be snappy. I ain't going to hang around. From one of my last videos, I told you that I was going to be working really hard and doing long hours. That is exactly what I've done. I worked up to Christmas. I was working very long hours. Didn't have time for fishing, basically. I had to pay for Christmas. Last winter, the weather was terrible. There was floods. There was rain. It was cold. It was nasty. <laughs> me weekends off that was the only respite that I got and during the weekends because it was horrible and it was raining there was floods everywhere and I didn't want to go fishing I joined up the local sports bar stroke snooker all so I spent the whole winter boozing playing snooker and going for a ruby when the weather started to brighten up a little bit after that dreadful winter we had we had this looming lockdown on the horizon you know with a pandemic and um, well basically we was all locked down weren't we so I weren't doing anything I was treating my garden like it was like a nature reserve I was going out there and I was looking at all sorts of creatures out there I was catching them and putting them in jars and feeding them all sorts of things just to occupy my brain <laughs> Look at that. As a result of all this, where I was away from fishing and making videos, I just lost me mojo. I just didn't feel like going fishing or making videos, even though I couldn't anyway. I stopped watching them sort of videos. I was watching different videos. I was watching UFC videos, tarantula keeping videos, all sorts of stuff. Nothing to do with fishing at all. I was watching Netflix, Cold Case Files, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Tiger King, is it? Carol Baskin, all that crap. I stopped watching all the fishing videos and I stopped commenting on other people's videos. I just it didn't... I just lost my desire to watch them videos. So for all the people that I'm normally commenting on their videos, don't worry, it's not like I've fallen out with anyone or I'm, I'm not watching them. I do watch them. I don't always get around to watching them straight away or commenting on them straight away. Yeah, I've commented on a few of John Locker's videos because it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? But he's the only YouTuber out there that I have any kind of contact with outside of YouTube. So I talk to him from time to time. So lockdown's over, I've been fishing a few times, I haven't been pulling up any trees. I've just sort of got that little bit of a bug back to go and do stuff. Uh, not the same stuff that everybody else is doing. I've got like nearly 200 ideas for videos. Most of them are unique, but some of them, because I'm not acting upon the impulse to make the videos, some people are actually making them videos while I'm standing still. So I've got to wrap my game a little bit. And I might be going in a slightly different direction. I mean, you know that I'm not all about fishing, not all the way anyway. I do go fishing, I enjoy it, I love it. I love to catch what I eat. I love to cook what I eat. I love to gather stuff off the shore. Don't expect too much from me. I mean, all this technology and editing stuff, it frazzles my brain proper. So I've got to tell you, I'm not going to be bringing a video out every week. We'll have to wait and see. Just taking little steps at the moment.